All right, guys. Um, so we're gonna do a little bit of a review lesson because we're we're going pretty deep into Photoshop, and I just want to make sure that we're getting the hang of all of our different selection tools. So this is gonna be pretty easy, especially since we've done uh, more difficult things. Um, but the first thing we're gonna do here is um, we're gonna find uh, the background that we're gonna use for the image, and you'll see here in your uh, Classcraft account that I've attached a whole bunch of images for you to use here. Um, you know, I, I put these in here because they're nice, big, good quality images, but feel free to try to find your own Pokemon to put, put in this picture. You do not have to use the ones that I gave you, but just in case everything is blocked on the school filter, you have a couple that you can actually work with here. So I'm going to go ahead and find the background um, just by kind of clicking and um, trying to open these things up. So that's not the background. That's Bulba. There's my background. So when you find this picture here in your Classcraft accounts, um, and it's right here, it has a big long number in JPEG, I should have renamed the files, but I didn't. Uh, you're going to right click and say save image as, and then go ahead and select your student numbers. Um, I already put mine on my desktop, and that's what I'm going to be working with here um, in Photoshop. All right, so I already have mine open in Photoshop, and you can kind of see it's a really great image really high quality image and that's what we want to be working with and you can kind of see also that as these pokeballs and they're all different colors move to the back um, it's all blurred out back here and as they move to the front the uh, front pokeball is nice and crisp also look at the shadows and the direction of the shadows um, we're gonna have to match all this stuff we're gonna have to match the blurs we're gonna have to match the shadows the direction of the shadows we're gonna have to make sure our pokemon look nice and crisp like this with all these reflections um, anyway, so here we go. This is going to be pretty basic to start out with, and it's going to be a basic tools uh, review. And I'm going to start out with, uh, let's say, either Bulbasaur. Um, oh, and notice also, there's all, all different file types. So this is a JPEG. This is a PNG file. All right. So with the PNG file, why not start there? Um, let's go ahead and grab Eevee. I'm going to use the move tool. All right. So just basically, this is how we get one picture into another. Evie, I shouldn't have any trouble with. She doesn't have a background, so I don't have to select anything or use any tool. I can just click, drag. I'm going to hold my cursor up over this tab until this image pops up, and then I'm going to bring my cursor down here while still holding my uh, left mouse button down, and I'm going to go ahead and release Evie. All right? She's super big right now, so in order to uh, change that, I'm going to use something called Free Transform. I'm going to go to Edit up top, and I'm going to go to Free Transform. All right, and with free transform, I'm going to hold down shift on my keyboard to restrain, uh, constrain my proportions, restrain my proportions, whatever, and I'm going to go ahead and shrink Eevee down, all right? So Eevee, I think, is going to be like my front Pokemon here. Um, since I started with her, I'll make her go ahead and I'll make her the biggest. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, before I press enter, I'm going to make sure that Eevee is the size that I want her to be, Okay. So, kind of like that, and I'm going to put her down here in the front next to this Pokeball. Everybody else is going to go in back of her, and every Pokemon is going to be a little more blurred until the Pokemon back here, you know, you can kind of see the color of, and you can see what it is, but we don't really, we don't really know, I don't know. So for right now, I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to go ahead and press Enter on my keyboard, all right? And we're going to add shadows and stuff like that a bit later. All right, so I'm done with Eevee. Once I'm done with Eevee, come up here to your tabs and go ahead and close her out. Don't save. If you get a pop-up window, don't save her. Go ahead and open up. I, I have already opened up all of my Pokemon here. So if you haven't, go ahead and open up your next Pokemon. Go to Classcraft and um, start clicking on the links in your Classcraft account. And let's go ahead and start with Charmander. Okay, Charmander is a PNG file as well. But he has this white background, which is going to be an issue. If I just kind of click and drag him out of here, I'm going to take the background with him. So the easiest thing for me to do is probably either use my quick selection tool or probably the magic eraser tool. So let's go over this. The magic eraser tool is right underneath your eraser tool. All right, With just the eraser tool, I can go ahead and um, erase the background if I want, but that would take three days. All right, The magic eraser tool works on tolerance. And right now my tolerance is set to 32. My only concern as I use this tool is that the white in his eyes is the same white as the white background. All right, So if I use my magic eraser and I end up deleting the eyeballs, that means my tolerance is too high. 
the way that tolerance actually works is it says, well, right now, it says with 32 selected, I'm going to click and delete. And notice how it didn't get the pixels over here or down here? Because this white over here must be a different shade. We can't really see it. But it must be a different shade than that white over here. And what this says is wherever I click, it's going to delete the 32 closest pixels um, to that color of white. All right. Actually, I know I didn't actually. Um, it's not a different shade of white over here. But if you notice, this picture is segmented. So this hand goes all the way over to the edge. And it kind of deletes in segments. So this one's probably going to cut off right here at the toe. Yeah, so it didn't get the bottom. So I'm just going to click down here and delete all of the white in the picture. And again, I'm just going to make sure that the white and the eyes did not get deleted. All right. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and select my move tool, take Charmander out and drop him right here behind Eevee. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and say, actually, I should make Charmander go with the red ball and Eevee go with the brown ball. That would be cute if I color matched them. So um, let's go ahead and select my Eevee layer. I'm going to go ahead and move her to the back. Um, you can control who's on top and who's in back just by clicking and dragging the layers, one on top of the other. Okay, And of course, whatever layer is on top is going to be the one in front. All right, so here's my Charmander, just like that. I'm going to probably free transform him just a little bit. And I'm going to move Eevee down here just a little bit to the back. There. So with Charmander selected, layer two. Oh, and let's go ahead and label these. We have background, layer one is actually Eevee, layer two, double click, this is Charmander, Char, there, okay. I'm going to go to edit, <clears throat> I'm going to go to free transform, holding shift on my keyboard again. I'm not going to make him too small because I want him to actually big, be bigger than Eevee because he's going to be my front Pokemon now, okay. So kind of like that, press enter on my keyboard. All right, guys, um, so this will look a lot better once we actually drop shadows on this stuff um, and we kind of match the colors to the, uh, or the effects to the Pokeball effects. But for right now, I'm just going to keep adding Pokemon. So I'm done with Charmander. Boom. Don't save. All right. Who's next? Pika. So with Pikachu, I could probably use the Magic Eraser tool as well, but for demonstration purposes, actually, let me show you this thing with Bulbasaur. Because Bulbasaur, see the shadow right here? If I try to use the Magic Eraser tool for this shadow um, and click on the white, notice how it leaves the shadow. So probably not the best tool to use because of that shadow. I'm actually going to use the Quick Selection tool for him. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to grab the Quick Selection tool. Your options for the Quick Selection tool are Select, Deselect, and then your brush size right here. So my brush size is really small right now, so I'm going to go ahead and take that up a little bit, but not much. I'm going to make sure that I'm on the select tab here, but if I do make a mistake, I can select uh, deselect right here. But I'm just going to click and drag over Bulbasaur and make sure that I just get Bulbasaur and not the nails or not the uh, background. But if I do get the background, like I said, I can fix it. And I should technically shrink down my brush a little bit more before I get that last nail right there because I want to get right in there and get really close. All right, and notice over here how I did select like the background a little bit. If you actually zoom in, you can see my selection's a little bit sloppy right there. And notice how I also have the eye. So let me go ahead and grab my quick selection tool there. And notice how it didn't get the outline. You want to make sure that you get the outline of your character. I'm going to go ahead and shrink down my brush a little bit more. Right now I'm at 9, so I'm going to go down to like 3 or 2. And I'm going to get in here and deselect this little bit right here beside the nail to make it nice and crisp. Select and make sure I get this part of the nail and the outline. And really get in there and look at your picture. All right, Bulbasaur is a good example on why you want to use the quick selection tool as opposed to another tool like the magic wand or magic eraser tool or the magic wand tool. There we go. And I'm just going to go in there and select so I get the outline of this toenail. And I know I'm being kind of nitpicky. You'd probably never see this anyway if it was shrunk down. But being that it is blown up, you can really see um, how good your selection is or how bad your selection is. And then right up here, I'm going to make sure that I get this little bit of green. 
All right, and with him selected, I can grab my move tool, grab him, take him up here, drop him in my new composition. Oh, he's actually kind of perfect sized. Uh, but he is in front of Eevee, which is what I don't want. So I'm going to go ahead and drop him behind. Oops. There. Eevee. There. All right, so far so good. I'm tucking behind Eevee's tail a little bit, so he's just kind of popping out. And remember, you have to make room for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven total Pokemon. So we've got four more to go. So make sure you are aware of your actual canvas size and what you're working with here. All right, and then we're going to use the text tool, and we're going to do some, like, Pokemon up here and make this a really cool poster. All right. All right, so we're done with Eevee. All right. Um, oh, there's Hypno, not to PN, or we're done with Bulbasaur, sorry, not Eevee. I'm going to close out Bulbasaur. Hypno should be nice and easy because he's a PNG file. I'm just going to click and drag and drop him in there. Oh, didn't like that. You guys will probably come into some issues with a couple PNG files that you might want to use as well, just like I'm doing right now. So Hypno's not going to work. I can find another... Uh, hypno picture, or I can file export, export him as a JPEG, and then bring him back in, and I can use the same picture. So if I really want to, and I like this hypno, I can actually just export this, and then bring it back in as a JPEG. So I'll close out the PNG file and open up the JPEG of hypno. JPEG it. it says it's a black background. I guess that's fine. It'll be a good example on how I use another quick selection tool for you. All right, so export all. I'm going to select desktop. You select your H drive. Desktop, boom, export. I'm going to go ahead and close him out, and I'll work on another Pokemon. I'll open him back up a little later. Ooh, so I have Mew. I want to have Mewtwo. Let's do. Let's get Mewtwo because he's cool. Everybody love Mewtwo. He cool. So instead of the quick selection tool for this one, let's use the magic wand tool. So right underneath the quick selection tool is the magic wand tool, and just like your magic eraser tool, it works on tolerance. So again, I want to select all the white in the picture. I don't want to select his eyeballs. I don't want to select any part of him except for the white background. So if I select too much with one click, I'm gonna uh, adjust my tolerance because right now it's set to 32. And look what a beautiful job it does. I mean, you can zoom in there and really look at this, and they got all the borders and the backgrounds. It probably did a better job than we could uh, just by using the quick selection tool. So now I'm going to go to select, and I'm going to go to select inverse. So I just select view 2 and not the white background. And then I can just kind of move them. Look how nice and easy and clean that was. And let's drop them in our new picture. And we have that little bit right there. I didn't even see that. So let's grab our magic eraser tool and grab that. Boom gone. All right. Um, free transform him. Edit. M. Her. I'm not, mm, not sure. With Mew. Just not sure. But I got to shrink him down to be smaller than Bulba. Um, so right now that's all right. Press enter and I'm going to drag and drop this layer. Below layer one. So he's in the background there. Kind of, sort of like that. All right, guys. Maybe a little bit behind Bulba there. Okay, I might actually make him a little bit smaller because the Pokeballs are getting a little smaller. Um, so let's go edit, free transform, and let's shrink him down a little bit more than he would be. All right, so there we go. For right now, that looks okay. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I um, increase the saturation and give Bulbasaur a little bit of shine because these other characters are so nice and shiny. Um, for right now, guys, I have four Pokemon in there, and I'm going to say File. I'm going to say Save As. I'm going to go ahead and put this PSD file on my desktop so that I can come back to it, and I'm going to call it Pokemon. Pokemon. And I'm going to call it a PSD file. Keep it as Photoshop. Share it on my desktop, say save. Yes, maximize compatibility, all that good stuff. Um, so in part two of this video, we're going to go through the rest of these Pokemon. I'm going to select them all. 
and um, you do the same. You can uh, kind of use any Pokemon you want, but you have to have a total of seven. So you can see I still have three more to do. We're going to put shadows on these things. We're going to put some effects on these so it looks just as good as the background does, and you can't tell that we chopped one picture out and put it into another picture. For right now, this is a long video. I'm going to say bye and watch for part two.